Yes. All right, let's start now with Happy Mother's Day to all of you ladies in the congregation. Thank you. On your way out, on your way in, you probably noticed there's a nice bouquet of flowers in the back. Please help yourself to a flower. Um, there is, are plans for a picnic in July. I'll tell you that ahead of time. It's July 9th, and it should be with Hosting Cal Faith and Evan um, and Raymer County. It will be here. Church service will be at 10 o'clock with a picnic following it. Please mark your calendars. You'll hear more as we meet with the other churches. The hymn on the board, the last one, is correct. I believe there's a printing error um, in the bulletin. And the psalm is 66, not 68, that's on the board. But you have your celebrate, so you know which one it is. Are there any other announcements? Enjoy your worship. Cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained master of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Awesome. You may share that as you feel comfortable. <laughs> Our entrance hymn is Thine is the Glory, number 145 in the Green Hymn. <laughs>
front of your celebrate insert. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. In Athens, Paul faces the challenge of proclaiming the gospel to Greeks who know nothing of either Jewish or Christian tradition. He proclaims that the unknown God whom they worship is the true Lord of heaven and earth who will judge the world with justice through Jesus whom God has raised from the dead. The first reading for today is from the 17th chapter of Acts, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps stroke for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends the first reading. The psalm for today is number 66, verses 8 through 20, and you're celebrate. <laughs> Thank you. 
The author of 1 Peter encourages Christians to remain faithful, even in the face of defamation and persecution. In baptism, we are made down, we are made clean to act in accordance with what is right. The second reading for today is from the third chapter of 1 Peter, verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous or the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends the second reading. imprinted 
on us so many things that help shape our attitudes, our behaviors, and how in general we look at the world. And that's all for better or for worse. Our sense of what is right, what is proper, and how we should relate to others is built largely on the legacy of our parents and other steady caregivers. The influence they made on our young, formative minds. You probably still can hear in your mind some of the things your mom said to you. Things like, pick up your mess. And do your homework first. And make sure you call. I guess moms now say, make sure you text. I don't know. These kinds of things we carry with us. And in, in my case, uh, my mom helped make me responsible to do what I was supposed to do and to be responsible to other people. But that internal parent is not the only internalized presence we as followers of Jesus carry with us. On the night in which he is betrayed, Jesus told his disciples, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. And Jesus continued, I will not leave you orphaned, I'm coming to you. And then on that day you will know that I'm in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. So let's unpack this a little bit. The Father will give you an advocate. Now in that Bible translation we used, the advocate was chosen, it sounds like God's giving us a lawyer. And if you check other Bible translations, you're going to find a variety of words for what the Father gives us. The King James Version says the Father's given us a comforter. Sounds warm and cuddly on a cold winter night. Some say counselor. God's giving us a counselor. That could be an attorney again, or it could be somebody we unload our burdens on. The message, which I know some of you have the message and like that, the message says the Father will give us a friend. Kind of reminds me of the Carol King song that James Taylor also did. You've got a friend. When you're down and troubled and you need some loving care and nothing, nothing's going right, close your eyes and think of me and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call out my name and you know wherever I am, I come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call and I'll be there. You've got a friend. So advocate, comforter, counselor, friend, and actually the word in the original version in the Greek is not readily translated into English. That's why we end up with such variety from the translators. Some Bible translators just kind of give up translating the word, and they just put an English version of the Greek word, which you see in some translations. It says, Father's giving us the paraclete. Sounds like we're getting a pet bird, right? Paraclete. Paraclete literally, literally means the one who's called alongside. In ancient times, sometimes it was used to describe a boat that went out to sail alongside another boat that was struggling to help that boat make it to shore, or if necessary, rescue the crew from the sinking vessel. And it was also used as the one who stood with you in, in the court of law as you sought to defend yourself. And in some ancient literature, that word was used to designate the one who prayed for you. Professor Carolyn Lewis from Luther Seminary wrote about how a friend and former student of hers experienced the rawness of grief. This was a female pastor, and her husband had recently died at, at the age of 43, so you know that was tragic. And she told, Car she told Carolyn how she'd attended a synod event, perhaps too soon following his death. And over and over again, this friend was asked to share her story of grief until it was just overwhelming. She couldn't take it anymore. And so she just had to get out. She had to get outside of the event. She went outside and sat on a bench all by herself, and there she cried. And she contemplated, well, maybe I'll just leave. Well, another woman pastor happens to show up, and she didn't really know this other pastor, only maybe by name. 
And the other pastor said, is there anything I can do for you? And Carolyn's friend said, just sit with me. She didn't need to say anything or do anything. Just be there. That's what she did, and that was what was needed. So Carolyn Lewis wrote that this gift of God, this paraclete, is kind of like that. The advocate, the helper, the comforter, the friend is the one who will always sit with us. God's spirit abiding in us. So we have this treasure, and this treasure also has us. But sometimes we forget about the treasure. Let me tell you about a rock collector and a seller of rocks and minerals named Rob Cutshaw. He owned, a, he owned a little mineral shop outside of Andrews, North Carolina. Now he wasn't a geologist, but he knew enough to go out and collect specimens and then to sell them to the tourists and to amateur collectors of minerals. So he was on a dig in the 1960s, and he found a blue rock. He described it as purdy and big. He stuck that rock in his rock shop and tried to sell it, but he didn't have any takers because the price tag was kind of hefty, $500. I have to admit, that's a lot of money for a rock. Well, it didn't sell, and Rob decided to just put it away in the closet. I figured if he ever needed to raise some ready cash, he could probably get a hundred bucks for it. Well, there it sat forgotten in his closet for 20 years. Finally, Rob decided to bring out that big blue rock and get it appraised professionally. It turned out that big rock was a two and a half pound sapphire, worth $3 million, and that's 1987 dollars. It, after it was cut, the sapphire became known as the Star of David. The rock went from being a minor possession and a forgotten curiosity to being a life-transforming event. In some ways, the rock, once recognized as the gem that it is, possessed Rob. For Rob, it changed who he is, it changed how he lives, it changed his outlook on life, and it changed how the world sees him. The difference didn't come in having the rock. He had the rock for 20 years. The difference came in knowing its value. We have a treasure right within us. It's a gift from the Father at the request of Jesus. It is the spirit of truth. It is our advocate, our counselor, our comforter, our friend, and the one who will sit with us through everything forever. This is the treasure of God in us and us in God. This treasure that we possess, it possesses us. This spirit of truth is here to change our outlook and change how others look upon us. This treasure already treasures us and leads us to grow in knowing the surpassing value of life in Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our sermon hymn is number 315. Why don't you find that in rise? <laughs>
Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 84 in the front of the Green Hymn. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. You can follow along on the back page of your Celebrate insert. Follow these fairly closely. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, places that are suffering and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed. Speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and all who are sick or grieving. And we lift up, especially this morning, we pray for little Lillian Labarge, and we ask, Lord, that your, your hands of love and protection would surround her and her family. We also pray for others on our prayer list, including John, Mike, Matthew, Bob, June, Rick, Elaine, Marcy, David, Kyle, Charlene, David, Carol, Joe, Marion, David, and those others who are on our hearts or on our lips. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom the day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for peace in this world, including for the people of Ukraine, peace in our nation, and an end to senseless mass shootings and peace in their hearts. We also ask, Lord, that the dignity of all people would come to be respected and honored. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our service continues with the offering as we glorify and worship God through our giving and with those gifts support the work of the church here and throughout the world. And our choir will be singing. Bye. 
us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you.
invite you to rise as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace.